This is a quick video to show how we made our own Star Lab at school with the fifth grade. Here you see it set up in our auditorium. The structure underneath the plastic is a pop-up canopy base. Our canopy was torn and so instead of throwing away the base, we kept it and found a use for it. Many schools have canopies that they save for different events during the year, like field day or fall festivals, and you could use the base for one of those, and it won't do any harm to the canopy since you won't be using that part. We bought a thick plastic, I think it's used for landscaping or gardening, and we found it at Ace Hardware. We got the biggest roll they had, but not the thickest. This is the price. The hardest part is getting the scale correct. I took a star map that I had and I tried it several different ways. I tried making an overhead and blowing it up using an overhead projector and tracing it onto a large piece of butcher paper. Finally, I decided the easiest way was to take a star map, put it on the copier, and enlarge it several times. I used the maps from this set. They divide the sky into different sections and the cards are color-coded depending on what constellation can be seen where. So I finally decided that if I took a star card that had a, one of the smaller area maps on it and enlarged it 200 times on the copier, cut it out, and then enlarged it 300 times more, that was the right size. So you can see the size I began with is the darker one, and then I enlarged it to the lighter colored one. I then laminated these pieces so that students could punch holes in them, but I could use them year after year. We've made a new planetarium three years in a row, and so I have perfected this to this point. It may get better in coming years. You can see that some of them had to be two pieces stuck together because they were so large. I then numbered them in the sections or quadrants of our planetarium that they would be punched into so that students didn't have to do that part. So Draco is in section three. The ones in the previous picture were part of section four. And you can see here the overhead that I tried to use and the quadrants it's divided into. I give students a copy of this as well so they can see what we're going for in the big picture. This piece of plastic is 25 feet by 25 feet, so you can see that it's very large. I spread out foam board underneath. It's already being used and we just recycle it every year. But that gives us something to press holes into. Otherwise, you're trying to poke a hole through the table and it doesn't work. Here you can see just over one quadrant spread out across the foam board, across the tables, all put together in my room. Each of four classes will work on each quadrant. So I'll have one quadrant spread out and all of the constellations that go in the one section. Students will, looking at the star map, spread them out where they're supposed to go, orient them correctly, have me check it, and then punch holes with thumbtacks as you see here. If it's a small star on my map, then they use just the thumbtack. And if it is one of the larger stars, then they will follow up by poking a larger hole in the thumbtack hole with a skewer. Before the students leave, they will circle their entire constellation with Sharpie. Then they will connect the lines or dots so that I can see the outline. And then they will put a name tag labeling this part. It really doesn't matter how sloppy the underside looks because it will be dark inside the star lab and you won't see it. We also, as you can see here, use black duct tape to tape up any holes that were made by accident. You will see that I put a check mark on the name tag once I have made sure that the constellation is correct and any extra holes have been covered up. I found it's much easier to do this while the students are still there than to try to do it myself one day after school. When one section is done, I try to slide the whole thing over and crumple that section together and then work on the next section with the next class. 
This is my son in the middle of this mess. It does take up a lot of room. So if you have a large space that you could do this, I would recommend it. However, I tried doing this in a parking lot and even pavement is too rough underneath and punches tiny holes in the plastic. Once we are finished, we set this up for our parent exhibit night. And I have docents inside with tiny laser pointers. They each specialize in just two or three constellations that they really like and that they have memorized the stories behind. So they will lead guests in two or three at a time and point to the constellations. The light from above shines through the holes and it looks like a perfect night sky. And so then they can tell about the two or three constellations that they are familiar with and guests can rotate through the docents and get a good overview of some of the more common constellations. If you can see in the corner closest to you in the picture, this is where we have the opening for people to enter and exit. Also, for the frame that we use, there's not quite enough plastic to cover around the bottom. So we cut off a piece from the one last year and clipped it around the bottom with alligator clips so that it would be totally dark inside. Next year, I think we might also add a small fan in one corner blowing out because it gets pretty warm in there. I wish the pictures inside turned out better. I will try again to get some this year. If you try this or have done something similar and you have suggestions about making it a little easier, I would love to hear them in the comments section below. Also, please check out my other hands-on science videos for elementary and middle school. There are about 50 of them now on NPMM Science on YouTube. Thanks a lot!